The Millers have worked hard to empower their children with the capacities to make choices based on positive values and to believe that they can accomplish all that they set out to do. I have memories of sitting around the dinner table and my father kind of going around to all of the children and asking our views on different subjects of the world. <laughs> You know, I'll never forget when uh, Lely went to uh, the Soviet Union for six weeks, and it was a program called Partners for Peace. And um, I remember when she, I went and picked her up at the airport, and I remember the moment we walked back into our house, she just kind of looked around and said, Dad, you don't know how lucky we are. And I said, yes, <laughs> you know, it was worth it. <laughs> uh, and um, I think that's perspective. I, I, and I, I think that's just uh, something we as parents have a responsibility to do, is to give our children perspective. Otherwise, they live in an unreal world. My mother is very active in the community and is very involved herself in issues of civil rights, um, working on issues of justice. And, um, and I think that that example was something that was very inspiring to me. I know my husband and I ask ourselves, um, how, do, how did we translate our values of service to our children? And it seems that uh, Laylee really has adopted those values in a way that perhaps she learned at a very early age. So I think she felt like she, if she persevered and if she worked hard and if she put her high ideals into practice that anything could happen, that there in fact could be justice. Laylee now practices law in Washington, D.C. As a 23-year-old law student, she took on a case that would become one of the most important U.S. legal cases in recent years regarding women's rights. It began on the other side of the world, in the small country of Togo. Here, many young women, like Fauzia Kazinja, traditionally are forced to undergo ritual circumcision as a rite of passage into womanhood. This ritual is also known as female genital mutilation, or FGM. Just hours before her ritual, family members helped Fauzia flee from Togo. She came to the U.S. to ask for asylum and protection from the ritual, which had killed her aunt and several friends. But instead of finding refuge, she was arrested and placed in detention. It would be almost eight harsh months in maximum security before 17-year-old Fauzia would get her first asylum hearing. My commitment to Fauzia, to the issue of female gemulation, to women's rights in general, really stems from my belief as a Baha'i in the importance of the equality of women and men. Yeah, you feel that if, if there is an injustice happening in Cambodia, it's happening in, to your family. And I think that this is one of the reasons why we felt so um, so committed to support Lely and her work with the uh, female genital mutilation. The Board of Immigration Appeals, the highest immigration appellate tribunal, agreed to hear Fauzia's case. Eventually, they rendered a decision which was favorable to Fauzia. It granted her asylum because of female gem mutilation, and it established a national legal precedent with regard to women being able to receive asylum on account of female genital mutilation. Upon her release from prison, Fauzia lived for a short time with Laylee's family. The mother-in-law said, this is your room. I said, my room? Oh my God, I have a whole room to myself. And she said, this is your bathroom. I went there just like, who like heaven. I said, oh my God. So I started jumping on the bed. I said, oh my God. And I told Laylee, please, if this is a dream, don't you wake me up. <laughs> I told her. And she said, oh, it's not a dream, don't worry. <laughs> Laylee used her proceeds from a book on the case to found the Tahereh Justice Center, which helps women who face human rights abuses. None of us know what our children are going to end up doing, you know, what career path they're going to end up doing. They'll probably have several careers these days. But what's important is we develop their capacities, their capacity to think, their capacity to take action, their capacity to make value-based choices and decisions, if we develop those capacities, whether girl or boy, man or woman, they will accomplish. They will accomplish uh, to the best of their capacity, and that's all we can pray for. Laylee gave a, a talk here uh, some months ago uh, for International Women's Day, and um, 
a number of people from her school came and one of them said to me that uh, she wanted to come see how our daughter had turned out. 